Hi, my name's John Atkinson. I'm going to run you through the 11 different fullers that I make and explain why there's 11 different fullers and not just one fuller. Every fuller have a, has a specific job and I'm going to explain why. The three fullers that I don't have on the table today are the Wide Blade Elite Roadster Fuller, which is a wider blade like that for fullering narrow, narrow steel, and the Pony Roadster Fuller, Elite Roadster Fuller, which is obviously smaller that way for going around small pony shoes. The other one I don't have is the Wide Blade Standard Roadster Fuller, which is just a wider blade that direction there for fullering thinner steel. So this is a range of fullers. These aren't show pieces, these are my pieces that I use. They've been all around the world with me. None of them are new. They've all got wear and tear on them, but I didn't want to bring show pieces and I didn't want to bring new pieces, especially for video shots. I just wanted to bring the pieces that I use just to show that they do work. If they didn't work, I wouldn't use them, I wouldn't sell them. So this is the Elite Roadster Fuller. It's a basic fuller for fullering any section of steel. It'll fuller from 8mm up to 12mm steel, and it's designed to accept the head of a e-head nail as you can see there the e-head nail fits perfectly into the the blade of the fuller there all these fullers that I make are all designed with the blade in a perfect line with the center of the striking face down to the blade so you draw a perfect line up there go straight through the center of the eye and straight up to the center of the striking face for optimum power they're also designed to go into shoes 90 degrees to your steel you shouldn't be leaning a fuller over one way or the other that's not how fullers work they're designed to go in 90 degrees to steel and it'll work every time that way no need to lean them over and all the fullers in the range are the same they all designed to go into the steel 90 degrees so that's the elite roadster fuller next is the standard fuller this is a, another roadster fuller with the same purpose as the elite roadster fuller obviously the difference is it's not polished it's just left as it comes out of the fire i forge them up clean them up i don't polish them it's a slightly cheaper version of it that does exactly the same job. Same function as the Elite Roadster Fuller, but a cheaper version of it. I prefer to use the Elite. It just feels nicer for me when I use it, but I'll use either one of them. Uh, coming soon, I've got the Wide Blade uh, Elite Fuller and Wide Blade Standard Fuller for fullering thinner steel, thinner sections, and they still allow the head of an E-head nail to sit into the fullering. This is a V Fuller. Uh, it's not a fuller that you use very often, it's a fuller that puts V-shaped fullering in rather than a standard shape fullering in, which allows you to fuller a shoe and stamp a nail hole and have no pitch on that nail hole. So you can stamp a nail hole in into a shoe vertically, whereas normally you put pitch on with a V-fuller you can stamp it in vertically, which is ideal for a lateral extension shoe or a horse with uh, upright boxy feet. If you use a standard fuller and then you pitch in stamp your nail holes in upright, what will happen is you'll end up with a, a little mark on the inside of the fuller. And it's unsightly, the shoe's still practical, the shoe still works, but it's unsightly, so just have the right tool for the right job. That's my opinion on it. And then we move on to the draft fuller. Draft fuller is just a bigger version of a standard fuller. It's bigger in all ways, it's bigger that way, it's bigger that way, it's just a chunky version. So that's designed to accept an E10 nail in 12 mil or half inch thick steel. Uh, all my fullers, they're all narrower at the top there, and they taper out and fan out towards the, the blade down there. You can see, so a fraction of a millimetre, maybe one and a half, two millimetres wider there than they are at the striking face there. That just allows them to put a better stop end in. When you come to the toe of a fuller in, and you get to the toe, lean it back, hit that, that, and it puts a dead square stop end in, guaranteed every time. This is my new guide fuller. I've had a guide fuller out now for several years, but this is a new version of it. I just chunked it up there, it's a little bit more beefy there. And most importantly, the cutting blade, draw a line straight through the center of the eye. The cutting blade lines up perfectly with the center of the striking face. So that means when you're, to, you're making a tool and fullered shoe, that goes onto your section there. You don't have to lean it that way, you don't have to lean it that way. It guaranteed to work with my section in my tooling block if you put it on the shoe and you keep it at 90 degrees all the time and that's guaranteed to mark your fuller in exactly the right place. All my fullers are all countersunk down there so that when you put your rubber in and shaft them the rubber flows through the eye hole there and the shaft stays in tighter for longer. This is a splitter. Uh, some people choose to use them, some people choose not to use them. It's basically a fuller. Once you've marked your fuller in, in a tool and fuller shoe with your guide fuller you then go through with a splitter. It's a very, very, very narrow blade. The function of this splitter is to split into the section 
to your fuller in full depth of the section without opening the section up so you can get the, the fuller in right as far deep as it needs to be without opening the section up so you can forge the shoe around the bick without affecting the, your fuller in too much. So this is the Hunter Fuller. The Hunter Fuller fuller follows on from the uh, splitter. So you've tooled your section through the tooling block. You've marked it with a guide fuller. You've opened your fullering up with the, the splitter. You've forged it around so you've got a finished shoe and all you need to do is put your Hunter Fuller in and finish the fullering off. Fuller's designed to accept a, an E-head nail at a slightly deeper section. I've marked this fuller with a H because all these fullers look very slimmer to some guys. To me, I look at them and they're all completely different. But I spend my life making them and I know a fraction of a millimetre here makes a massive difference. If you try to make a normal fullered shoe with this fuller, it just wouldn't work. But a tool and fullered shoe would be perfect. So that's the Hunter Fuller. Like all the fullers designed, so the line from the cutting blade there goes straight through the centre of the eye and is in line perfectly with the centre of the striking face there. So that's the flat bottom fuller. It's sort of an underrated fuller to a certain degree. People don't realise how good and how useful it is until they buy one or acquire one. Uh, it's designed to fuller into a concave section like that. So you go through a concave section, use it for multiple things. On bar shoes, if you have a fire weld across your bar shoe there, you can fuller through the fire weld and it looked like the concave just flows right the way around the shoe through the fire weld and back up again. The other thing that I use it a lot for is lateral extensions, particularly on hind feet. So you go to your foot and you want a bit more width on your foot, on your shoe, you knock that into the shoe, set it in there and fuller up like you would with a normal fuller and it blows a section out. You can gain up to an eighth of an inch width and up to an eighth of an inch length just by opening it up with a flat bottom fuller. Saves a lot of time rather than having to make a shoe, you can just get a machine made shoe like this out your van and make a lateral extension quick and easy with a flat bottom fuller. This is my Elite Roadster fuller. I've taken a shaft out for maintenance purposes. I'm going to show you how to maintain it and get the best out of this tool with the use of the linisher or grinder. I'm just going to show you, or introduce you to my linisher. I've got linishers in the forge, I've got linishers in the van. Uh, I love them, they're great for tool maintenance and obviously boxing shoes off. So this is my linisher in the van. Uh, I love these linishers because for sharpening, uh, polishing up hammer faces, like I said, you don't want a flat hammer face. You need the hammer face to be slightly domed. If I polish the hammer face up on this big plate there and span it round, I'd end up with a perfectly flat face on the hammer. I don't want that. I want it to be able to just pivot slightly. So this little cavity between that point there and that point there is a perfect place to sharpen hammers. So you just apply pressure there. There's nothing underneath of the belt. So the belt's got a little bit of give in it. There you can see how the, the belt's got give in it there. So if you're polishing a hammer face, it'll just put a slight dome on it. If I put it back there, it's on the plate there and it just make it perfectly flat. Same with the hole punch. The hole punch is obviously round. If I polished it up on a flat surface, I get flat corners on it there. So I can apply pressure there. Uh, you can see there the, the belt has a little bit of give in there. So it's polishing a slightly rounder surface on it. So we're just going to run through fuller maintenance and setup as well, really. I've drawn a red line on there. Optimum fuller, like all my fullers are made this way, so that the cutting blade there lines up straight through the centre of the eye. This is the eye where the shaft goes. So that line goes straight through the centre of the eye, straight up and comes out in the centre of the striking face. That gives you optimum power, means your fuller is going to work better. If the, if the cutting surface is off one side or the other, when you're fullering you've got to lean your fuller over one way or the other. It becomes slightly more dangerous because it means you've got to hit the corners rather than hitting smack bang in the middle and get optimum power delivered through that fuller. So fuller maintenance, basically the striking surface there, just keep an eye on it. Occasionally a fuller will chip, it doesn't matter how good you are or how good the tool is that you're using. Eventually over a period of time you might get a chip, you might get lucky and not. But if you do, just keep an eye on it and just grind it up. Just go around at 45 degrees around there and just take the edges off and just check it and make sure everything's safe. The cutting blade there, very important. Over a period of time, if you've sharpened it, fullers do need sharpening every now and again, not very often, but every now and again. If you over sharpen one side, the uh, cutting surface, cutting blade might end up off center. So you need to keep bringing it back into the center there. So if you can't see it, draw a red line on it. If I want to move the cutting blade that way, I'll, I'll get it on the grinder and I'll grind a little bit off there and that'll move it that way. If I need to move the cutting surface that way, I'll put it on the edge of the grinder there and I'll just gently move it round and that'll move it back over that way. So I'll keep my cutting blade there, right in the centre of that line. Very, very important. And once you do grind it, you must look at it from every angle. Check that way, 
check that way, make sure everything's in line, make sure everything's balanced, check it from every different possible angle to make sure that that cutting blade perfectly in line with that. Should draw another line on both sides really because quite often you can end up with the blade one way or the other. But just check it, just look at it, look at it that way, look at it that way, just check everything you do. And the other thing you need to make sure is on a fuller, the whole idea of fuller in a shoe is so that the groove that you put in that fuller is big enough to accept the head of a nail. So in a 10mm piece of steel, you're going to fuller roughly that deep there. So that you go that deep, that's going to accept a size 5 nail. If you go deeper, so that deep, that's probably going to accept to E6. Deeper again, it's going to accept to E7. So it depends how deep you go in your steel as to what angle you need on your blade there. If I was using real thick steel, I'd grind it off like that, almost like a hunter fuller. If I was using uh, flat steel, like 8mm steel, I'd have it ground really wide. But we'll go into more detail in that later on. So I'm okay. just going to show you how to grind this fuller up here. I'm just going to run around this corner at 45 degrees. And then I'm just going to sharpen up this edge. It doesn't need it, obviously. I look after my tools, and, but I'll just show you how to do it. just polish just the sharpness off there you don't want this to be like a knife edge it needs to have a little bit of uh, roundness on it else it just overheats in the shoe and it can burn quickly so I sharpen them and then I just lightly run it across there just by flicking it side to side just take the very sharpness out and it's that simple just show you on the grinder now how to sharpen the fuller so it's got a nice curve on it like the inside edge of the fuller so I just place it on like that and grind it off and on this side here moving it or I'm not keeping it still at any point I'm always moving it just keep it moving around making sure that distance from there to there is the same on both sides so a little bit there and a little bit there and you want to end up with that nice consistent curve going all the way over so I'll fire the grinder up and I'll show you how to do that Yeah, that's pretty nice. We've got a nice consistent curve over there. Everything's in line with the red line that I've drawn on there. It's still in the centre of the blade. It's nice and sharp. I just took the very sharpness off it just by going across it like that because you don't want it like a knife. It needs to be sharp but not so sharp as it's going to go blunt quick. If it's too sharp, it'll go in the steel and get really hot really quick and go blunt. And that's it.